Hey, y'all. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. We're going to be working on a mixed media piece. I took an ugly canvas, an inexpensive canvas, and I just covered it in scrap papers, different kinds of papers, tissue papers, decoupage papers, book papers, dictionary, and I just cut it in pieces. I personally don't like straight edges, so I cut all of my pieces and I applied it with DIY Paints Liquid Patina. You can find this product on my website, lisaboondesigns.com. I like to position my papers in different uh, directions. It just creates interest. You won't see all of the papers, but you will be able to see some of it coming through. It's just the first step. This is the beauty of mixed media art. You create art using all different kinds of products to make one cohesive, beautiful look. I'm gonna be creating some raised stencils. These particular stencils are by Jamie Ray Vintage, designed by Mara LaFay of Vintage Retail Therapy. I'm also gonna be using DIY Paints beadboard to create a softer look. So I'm going to apply it using my brayer and I watered it down just a little bit. I also took a little bit of DIY Paints crinoline just to add a little bit more contrast and depth and interest. And just, again, I'm just toning down the background and creating a nice thin layer over the paper. Once my paint is dry, I take some gesso. I do have gesso on my website. It's not the particular one that I'm using. This is by Liquitex but I have um, different options for clear, white, and black gesso on my website. You can apply it with a palette knife. I'm using my finger. I'll also be using the brayer just to create texture, tone things down, and create more interest. Again, this is all about creating layers. Mixed media art is about layers, layers, layers. To thin it out or to remove some extra gesso, I just use a baby wipe and I can do the same thing with DIY paint until it's sealed. You can manipulate it. Now the gesso will act as a sealer, so wherever that is and it's dried, I will not be able to manipulate the DIY paint that's underneath. Here I'm showing you that this is an inexpensive canvas. It was a picture of a tree, so you can paint over anything. If you find something in a thrift store, something that you have in your house, you can just recycle it. Next, I'm going to take some modeling paste and I'm going to apply it with a palette knife and use my stencils to create just texture and interest. And you don't have to do the entire ten stencil. You can do it in bits and pieces. And I do take the stencil and randomly place it in different positions using the modeling paste and my palette knife, but you could also use gesso or DIY paint that's nice and thickened. Unless it's DIY paint, I'm not putting it down my drain. So I just always wipe off my stencils using another piece of board or a canvas so that this way I'm immediately creating some texture for a future project. So here is a look at what we have going on and you can see the layers, you can see the texture, you can see all of the colors, all of the papers at this point. Now I want to say that I first started really getting interested in mixed media art thanks to Jane Belanti of Jane Belanti Art. I'll put her links in the description. She's a DIY paint retailer and she is very, very knowledgeable in mixed media. Next, I take some boutique tissue paper. You know the tissue paper that they wrap your goods in when you go to a boutique? They have some beautiful papers and those are great to decoupage with. And so I had gotten a whole bunch of these that I wanted to use for mixed media art. I take one of those water pens and you could take a regular brush and just dip it in water and create a water line that you can tear your paper with so that you could be very intricate in making sure that you cut only what you want. 
I like a raw organic edge. I don't like to use my scissors because I don't like the straight lines. So I like the way that that comes out. Next, I'm taking gel medium. This is available on my website. Again, you could use liquid patina, um, but I wanted to use the gel medium. It's really an awesome product because it gives you a little bit of wiggle room. This is a great project for lots of scraps. Save them all. So you can see that this paper is so thin that the raised stencil is coming through it. These are also great projects for extra paint that you have that maybe you're not gonna use or that colors that you created and mixed. I just go ahead and I, I take colors that work with the papers and I apply it using a brayer or a palette knife. Then I'm going to take my Orange You Glad Making Powder by DIY Paint with a little bit of water and I'm going to apply it like watercolor. This is pure pigment and so you can create some really cool techniques and add some interesting color variations on your projects. It's exceptionally great using it directly on unsealed DIY paint. This is my focal point. This is the peacock that's part of a larger piece of decoupage paper. I take my water pen and I just cut out the parts that I want to keep. I'm using the gel medium which allows me to lift that paper back up. It gives me that wiggle room and then I just apply it down with the brayer and then once I have it exactly positioned where I want it, then I take my gel medium and I seal in my paper. And then I take the other scraps that I'm wanting to apply and I do the same exact thing. I take DIY Paints Prairie Gray with a palette knife and I apply it in random places just to create more depth and contrast on my piece because for right now the majority of the piece is very light except for that peacock is really really dark and so I need to tie it in together and prairie gray is a wonderful neutral it's one of my favorite colors to use to tone down or just to create neutral pieces now to add some lightness and soften up some of the papers I take a little bit more gesso and I just apply it with my hands the gesso also acts as a transition from the papers to the canvas so that you don't see the harsh lines of the paper and it just makes it all blend in together Whenever I use napkins to decoupage with, I keep the white layers and I use them to tape onto copy paper, put them through my printer and either print designs or usually a variety of different text. And that gives me a little bit more flexibility than just using stamps, although the IOD stamps are amazing and I do have them on my website. You can purchase them or in store but this gives me just different types of fonts that I can create on my computer. And so I had my, my design laid out. What's great too about using the tissue paper is that it is so thin and it melts right into your background and you can't see that you have decoupaged the text onto there. 
I wanted to add the butterfly because it had the same colors and the same tone. And again, I want the contrast to not be so great. I want it to make sense. I grabbed a scrap of that leaf that again has those brown colors and it's gonna help to tie in the piece together. So I always save all of my scraps, especially IOD transfers. I had this napkin with these beautiful orange poppy flowers and so I cut them all apart and I ended up layering them on the background of the peacock or I'm sorry on the bottom of the peacock and what's great about using tissue paper also is that because it's so thin you could actually lay your piece exactly where you want it and apply your decoupage medium over. You can do it either way, but this gives you the ability to lay it out exactly where you want it and the medium soaks through to the bottom. And so you're applying it and sealing it all in one step. But you do want to make sure that you have it exactly where you want it because you won't be able to pick it up because it's so fragile it will tear. So be very careful even when you're brushing on your decoupage medium. IOD transfers apply very, very easily. Just make sure that your piece is sealed so that the transfer can adhere very well. I didn't have my little applicator stick, but you can use anything. Just go with it and get it. I've even used my nails. Just go with the flow. I love IOD transfers because they look amazing, whether it's on furniture or mixed media art. They are wonderful to use. You can purchase them on my website as well. You'll want to use a toner printer so that your paper doesn't bleed. However, if you don't have one and you only have an inkjet printer, you can seal the paper before you decoupage it. You can do that with a variety of products. I've even used um, DIY paints big top and water and sprayed it on rice paper before but you could also use this product here I picked up this set of metallic watercolors from five below and I really love the shimmer that it gives. That brown is more bronzy. And so I apply that to all of my edges. You could use uh, any of the DIY paint colors or any, any color that you want to use to add more interest and dimension and just create a frame to your piece. DIY paints dark and decrepit would be another great option. I also took some of the yellows and greens and just applied it over my napkins and the peacock and the butterfly just to create some pops of color and just to add some more wow to the piece. You could really see it up close and personal. It really created a wonderful addition to the piece. Here you can see the piece after I did the watercolor and you can really see that interest, that bronzy metallic, um, the orange, the colors come to life and the greens, you can see it right there when the light hits it. So I really love that aspect of it. The napkins, the tissue papers, the ray stencil, everything just came together. The DIY paint, the gesso created some highs and lows and it really looks awesome. You can really see that shimmer right here on the top with that bronze. So this is the finished piece. 
you can see all of the layers. You can see my first background layer with the papers that I decoupaged onto the canvas. You can see the raised stencil over the tissue papers and the transfer. And I really love the way that it turned out. It was a lot of fun. Every now and then I have to stop doing furniture and do some of this just to play. And it just really brings me a lot of joy. How do you feel about mixed media art? Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you for liking it and for commenting and for sharing. I hope that you have an incredibly blessed day.